Hey, I am Aryan Kumar. Hi, I am Shreyas. I am Ayan Sattarshi. Hi, I am Madhuri Pandey. Hi, I am Dhira Madhuri. I am Salika Majumdar. We are covering a topic which is well known fact and yet most people seem to avoid this conversation. We are going to talk about thermal power plants. Now, in order to provide foundation, India has total installed power generation capacity of 3,75,322.74 megawatt of which 2,31,590.72 megawatt is generated from thermal power energy. Thermal power is the largest source of energy in India. About 71% of total energy consumed in India comes from thermal energy. Thermal energy is produced using different types of fuel to generate steam such as coal, natural gas and diesel. We will cover two power plants today that will help us build a, a premise to our ulterior motive. We are trying to identify and understand the visible impacts of a thermal power station on the locals. Displacement patterns, availability of basic necessities, and impact of uncontrolled pollution on biodiversity in total. We'll start with Singroli Super Thermal Power Station, popularly known as Anpara Thermal Power Plant. It is located in the Shakti Nagar district of Uttar Pradesh and is the first power plant of NTPC. The states benefiting from this power plant include Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Rajasthan, Punjab, Haryana and Himachal Pradesh and the union territories of Delhi, Chandigarh and Jammu and Kashmir. The total installed capacity of this power plant alone is close to 2000 megawatts. Now the problem in hand is that of pollution and contamination of natural resources. The region has already been identified as critically polluted area commonly known as CPA by the Union Ministry of Environment and Forests. Increased level of mercury are found in water as well as air in the region. Incremental coal mining activities in the region and the rapid development of coal-based thermal power plants has resulted in acute air and water pollution, leading to serious health problems among the residents of the locality, which remains unaddressed. Singrauli region, a major power hub of the country, is dotted with coal mines and coal-fired thermal power plants, which together have an installed capacity of about 12,700 megawatts. The mines nearly produce 23 metric tons of coal per annum. The area also has aluminium smelting plants, chemical industry, cement industry, stone crushers, and other industries which make it more lethal for the region. Now, let's look at the Utility Power Corporation Limited, which is an imported coal based power plant with an installed capacity of 1200 megawatt. Located in the Udupi district of Karnataka, it is the first independent power project using 100% imported coal as pure mineral. It imports coal from Indonesia and supplies 90% of the power to Karnataka and remaining 10% to Punjab. This Adani Power Run Power Plant proposed addition of another 1600 megawatt, which hit the locals and like it not. They expressed grave concern towards judicial expansion and cited it as a threat to Western Ghats and UNESCO World Heritage Site. The most important thing to note is that the economy of the adjoining area is mainly agrarian and have been badly affected as field has declined with almost 60%. According to a report by an expert committee constituted by the National Green Tribunal, the pollution caused by plant has been tied to spiraling of cases in the area surrounding the plant that is Elur, Natcha, Manipur, Shantur and other villages. The region's ecology, environmental status, crop productivity, social economic and health aspects have been greatly affected. But how did we get here? In order to understand that, we need to understand the mechanism of a thermal power plant. First, coal is delivered to the plant from the coal fields by train, which are unloaded at coal yard and is stored here. Later, the coal is moved to the crusher, the conveyor belt, to crush the coal into smaller pieces. Later, it is sent to the pulverizer, which turns the small pieces of coal into very finely crushed coal powder, so that the coal burns well in the furnace and minimizes the pollution created in the form of ash. When the coal reaches in the furnace, it gets heated up, and the majority of the coal turns into two forms of ash high ash and bottom ash. The bottom ash is collected easily and sent to the cement factory, 
but the main problem lies in the flyage. It is collected by the electrostatic precipitator, which is negatively charged and attracts the ash particle to it, and that collected flyage is repelled. This collected flyage is later dumped into ash ponds, which pollutes the water bodies and creates the majority of pollution. And this problem of flyage is to be These power plants have gravely impacted the ecosystem in numerous ways. Contamination of water, we will take the case of Sonbhadra. The thermal power plant has a geographical advantage as it is situated close to the Gopal Valda Pant Sagar, which unfortunately for the locals is the only source of water in that region. The ash produced by burning fuels is conveniently dumped by the power plants into the lake, which now have increased levels of mercury and is not portable. The locals have no other option than to dig chuas, which are basically dug to collect rainwater, which is now the closest source of drinkable water. The contaminated water of the lake also seeps into the water table, which thus degrades the water table, further contaminating the produce of the local farmers, which further affects the poor economy in that region. Air pollution. The power plants also emit a large number of harmful gases in the atmosphere which may not be in the best interest of the people having lungs and breathing problem but also affects the health of the healthy persons. Also many power plants dump ash on the roadsides and highways thus introducing fly ash as in ash in the form of powder so fine that it can mix up with aerosol which is easy to inhale. Side effects might include asthma, bronchitis, lung infection, eye irritation, and skin itching. It also leads to collision of rooftop sheets, agricultural implementations, dish antennas, etc. Degrading economy, destruction of crops due to contaminated water table, expansion of power plants, causing settlements to move to another place increased production of energy, demanding increased extraction of coal, faster collapse of natural resources, low wage employment, at various facilities, exploitation of the locals, and lastly, taking away the natural biodiversity, the beauty of the region which could have been preserved for generations to come. Are there any existing policies in place to keep a check on these institutions? After getting the whole understanding of the problems which exist because of thermal power plant, I went on to research about the existing policies. A policy issued in 2015, Revised Emission Norms for Particulate Matter, also known as PM, of sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen for thermal power plant, requiring them to install emission control system by December 2017 but the plants failed to comply with the standards and asked for the revision of dates and then the deadline is pushed to December 2022 for all power stations in the country. Then we were curious to know if there is any existing policies or acts in place which helps the ones that are directly affected by these power plants in their neighborhood. Unfortunately none, we found none. None of the active policies are dedicated to the cause of the people who are directly affected by these projects. There were nothing like compensation, subsidies or even health insurance to them. They were left with their miserable conditions and no one is even talking about them. They are suffering from a direct case of negative externality. But their topics are neither getting attention by the government nor by the media houses. Solutions We have come to the field. The employment of electrostatic precipitators to control particulate matter in the thermal power plant. This technology uses static electricity to remove soot and ash from the exhaust fumes before they exit the smokestacks. Adoption of carbon capturing storage facility to capture carbon dioxide transporting it to a storage site and depositing so that it won't enter the atmosphere. This technology is used to convert carbon dioxide to different gases which can be used as fuel further, such as CH4 methane through catalytic process 
also to H2 through carbon shift and also carbon dioxide to algae and then to biodiesel through solar flux. Retiring old subcritical thermal power generating units of 23 gigawatts. This will save the nation a big chunk of pollution emission and these old power stations can be replaced with more advanced and efficient power stations.